Tommy from Technicians here. First of all, I want to say we're amazed. We're floored. We've been putting out content realistically for about seven days now and nearly 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. We're, I mean, so appreciative of the community too. You guys are such a great community and we're all about growing the hobby. So for hitting this milestone that we didn't expect to hit for months and months and maybe years, we would like to give back. So we're giving away two free virtual consults and one Fluval Aquarium. The Fluval Aquariums are great beginner tanks. They're good for people who have uh, never been in the reef keeping hobby or just want a very easy to keep tank. You keep very hardy corals in there and just a couple fish but it's an awesome entry level tank. We're also gonna be doing a series where we show you all the steps A through Z to keep one of these tanks successfully. So if you're interested in the aquarium or the virtual consult, let us know in a comment. I'm at the aquarium shop now. I'm gonna give you an update on uh, some of the fish that we unbox and also some other fish that Andy got in in between that video and this video. Again, thanks so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So here's that. Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua And also a bunch of chocolate tangs and a yellow eye coal tang. The chocolate tangs, genus Acanthurus, uh, the entire genus Acanthurus, they're generally uh, trickier to keep because they have very short digestive tracts. They need to eat really frequently throughout the day, you know, like four or five, six times a day. Um, but the chocolate tangs are some of the hardiest members of that genus. The coal tangs are really easy to keep. Let's see if we can get some footage of him. That's a really pretty coal tang. These are Bangai cardinal fish, and they're a great beginner fish. They're very peaceful, community friendly, reef safe. They stay fairly small, about three inches long. They have very interesting color, shape, behavior, just a great all around fish. And so it's very common at your local fish store to see displays like this, where there's multiple juveniles being kept in the same aquarium. Once they get older, once they reach about an inch and a half, two inches, and they are mature, males and females will start to pair up. And when they've done that, a pair will aggressively defend their territory away from any other Bangai cardinal fish. They shouldn't be aggressive towards any other fish in the tank except for Bangai's though. So if you're going to keep these, it's recommended to keep them singly or in a pair. It can be difficult to pair them though because the males and the females have no sexual dimorphism, which is to say they don't look visually different. So ask your local fish store for advice. One other thing I want to point out on this fish is that those black and white bands that they have help them to blend in long spine urchins. So if you remember in the last video, we unboxed a couple long spine urchins. In fact, here's one now. And those black bands help them disguise living inside of these. In the same way that a clownfish will swim in an anemone, these Bengai cardinal fish get protection from long spine urchins like these. So pretty cool behavior. Uh, this is a neon damsel. This is actually the first saltwater fish that I ever had experience with because when I was a kid in, I don't know, probably middle school, one of my teachers had a small live rock aquarium with just a few damsels and this was one of them. So they're very pretty when they're small. They have a ton of energy, but as they get larger, they get very aggressive and they lose almost all of that color. Ours looked just like this when we got it. After a couple years though, it was all of four or five inches and so aggressive we had to take it out of the tank, bring it to a local fish store. I honestly have no idea what happened to it just because once they reach that size, they're so aggressive, there's few tanks they'll do well in. You can see this one's only about an inch longer and it already lost all of its yellow and the blue is much less vibrant. This is a sexy shrimp and by far, one of my favorite invertebrates, although they do stay small, so they're probably best for nano aquariums. It's a very social animal, and a lot of times you don't think about social invertebrates, social shrimps, but they have a really complex hierarchical 
uh, community structure. They do best in larger groups. So the last time that I kept these, I had 16 of them in a 12 gallon nano. And not only will they interact with each other, but they'll also interact with their environment. So they'll live commensally on corals and anemones. Mine were living on Redactus endosinensis mushrooms and Maximini carpet anemones. It was a really cool display. These are the Kupang damsels that we unboxed in that last video. And you can see they're doing fine. Um, the coloration is a little bit brighter now, but it really doesn't pick up on the camera. They have this uh, neon blue kind of zigzag pattern that runs through their body under the right lighting. And that's a Niger trigger. For all the Cuffrows watching, and I know that is most of you, who remembers the name for a snail tongue? You can see here in this footage, these are Mexican turbo snails, and their tongues, you see the undulating part through the mouth that's opening, rasping the algae off the glass. Let me know what that's called in the comments. This is a Naoko fairy wrasse, and really cool thing about this fish is that it was unknown to science until collected by the marine ornamental trade just a few years ago. So we discovered this fish, um, at least in terms of science. I'm sure other people had seen it at some point in the region where it's found, but it's a very pretty fish. You see the males have that bright yellow stripe down their body, and depending on what you feed them, you can get really, really bright uh, teal blues out of their tail. You see where it's silvery there? If you give them food high in vitamin C, that turns bright, bright blue. Really pretty fish. This is the blue spot puffer fish that we unboxed. And uh, I mean, just look at all the personality that it has. They are such buddies. Great fish. Unfortunately, they're not reef safe and they will go after invertebrates. But if you have a fish only aquarium, they're great. For those of you who don't know, the aquarium shop is our local fish store. It's where we get most of our supplies and uh, livestock for the aquariums that we service. Andy has been in the hobby for too long, like 50 years, 40 years in the industry. If there's anything that you want, he can usually get it. He has tons of experience. It's been a great resource for us. So if you're local, it's 1811 Bomar Road. He's got a pretty cool setup. He's got this island invert system in the middle that cascades. These are I've typically seen these as freshwater planted displays, but it looks really good for his invertebrates. He's got all his fish on the sides. And then, of course, he's got his pole display. This is one of the flame angel fish that we unboxed, and you can see here the colors are phenomenal, which makes it extra unfortunate that almost always they end up not being reef safe. Thank you so much for watching this video. You'll notice that some of the clips don't have the original audio like this one, and that's because Andy had some music playing. I didn't realize my microphone was picking it up, and I didn't want to get DMCA'd. Unfortunately, that also happened with my outro clip. So again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day. You guys like bees? I love bees. Look at all these bees. Lots of happy bees.